we don't have to talk about the Beatles. I don't, it just sort of came up. But um, if you want to talk about the Beatles, that's fine. Cyrus, I think we should add the Beatles to the list of topics that immediately get people fired up. Uh, kids who cry at mass and people line up on both sides to get outraged very quickly in favor of the parents who have you know noisy kids and then against. Uh, what should you wear to church? People get riled quickly when we talk about, I mean, which we never do, but I mean, people get riled. Uh, what about do animals go to heaven? Do your pets go to heaven? Instant electricity. People instantly light up on that topic. Vaccinations, oh. that's, that's a biggie. Um, so well, let's add the Beatles to the list so that people instantly are galvanized for or against. And the phone lines just light up. I mean, they're, it's hard to light it up more than it already is, but I think we've seen the Beatles do. Now, this reminds me, Cyrus, of some uh, comments that were made by Ricky Gervais. Uh, he was doing an interview recently, and uh, I was talking with you about this before the show. Uh, he is very outspoken. Uh, but you're saying, who is Ricky Gervais? Okay, if you ever saw the British office, which predated the American office, the TV show, Ricky Gervais is the boss. He's the Michael Scott character. and He's very, very intelligent, very biting in his wit. Uh, he's an avowed atheist. I feel sorry for him, but he's got a great talent. He's also very foul-mouthed. So if you ever listen to any of his uh, you know, material, prepare to bleep it out. But in any case, he's got a lot of talent. And, and it's interesting because for somebody who is so kind of left of center as Ricky Gervais is, uh, he's also speaking a lot of sense. He's making a lot of sense when he talks about the cancel culture and how the cancel culture bullies people into blacklisting people, canceling their, forcing them off Twitter, forcing them off Facebook if they happen to say something uh, that the cancel culture doesn't like. You know, go after this person and completely obliterate him or her. Uh, Ricky Gervais speaks out against that. Uh, so this is a great article here from the Daily Wire. So in an episode of a podcast where he was being interviewed, uh, Ricky Gervais said, the scary thing is being canceled if you say something wrong or if you say the wrong thing, and suddenly Netflix can take you off their platform. You could be the most woke, politically correct stand-up in the world at the moment, but you don't know what it's going to be like in 10 years' time. You can get canceled for things you said 10 years ago. Uh, and he's right about that. He says, the misunderstanding about cancel culture is some people think you should be able to say anything you want without consequences, and that's not true. Because we're members of society and people are allowed to criticize you. They're allowed to not buy your things, they're allowed to burn your DVDs, and they're allowed to turn the telly off. What they're not allowed to do is to bully other people into not going to see you, but that, of course, is what they actually do. Ricky Gervais says, some of it's down to politics, some of it's down to social media, it's way too fast. 20 years ago, if you were offended by someone on television, you got a pen and paper and you went, Dear BBC, now you fire off a tweet and that tweet goes on the news. It's things happening too fast that you can't take back. People dig in and people want to be heard. People want to feel they have an effect. It's why people heckle a comedian. They want to feel they were here, they were, they were there. Now people are heard. Uh, a chorus of celebrities, this according to the Daily Wire, a chorus of celebrities have come out swinging against cancel culture. Last August, uh, a singer, Kelly Rowland, no clue who that is, former, formerly of Destiny's Child, no clue who that is. I guess it's a band. We would just a band. Um, they are against cancel culture. Uh, it, I mean, it just, it's endless. Cyrus, uh, you use Firefox, don't you? I mean, I have it too, but I'm a Chrome guy. You're a Firefox guy. I am a Firefox guy. I'm afraid of what you're about to say. I have no idea. <laughs> Nothing about you. Don't worry. You're not going to get canceled. <laughs> but the, the main guy behind Firefox, Mozilla, that's obviously not his name. I forget what his name is. But he was like the, the CEO of Mozilla, the company that produces Firefox. Very successful. Uh, Firefox is, you know, a prominent browser. And some of the quote-unquote woke people... Whenever I see the word woke, I think, well, I'm not going to say what I really think, uh, but I have another word that comes to my mind when I see people who call themselves woke. In any case, let's not go down that road. Some of, some of the busybodies, I think, working in his company or maybe you know just other people out there, they were ferreting around, digging through his, uh, his past, and they found out that he had made a donation of $10,000 to uh, the proposition that was on the ballot in California years earlier 
uh, to uphold traditional marriage as between one man and one woman. This was in the lead up to the um, you know the, the decision with regard to same sex marriage and so called marriage equality and all of those things. So they found out that he made a ten thousand dollar donation which as an American citizen, he has a right to do if he wants to make a donation, if he wants to support a political cause or a party or a candidate, he's free to do that. And he made the wrong choice in their eyes because he donated money to the traditional marriage campaign, one man, to define marriage as one man and one woman. And they clawed at him so ferociously that they forced him out of the company. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I have to go back and look, I believe he was the CEO of the company, a major dude. And all the major dudes will tell you that he was a major dude and he, you know, very successful financially, et cetera. And he was out on his ear because the cancel, cancel culture decided that that was something up with which they would not put to have somebody like that donating money to support traditional marriage. That's how it works. So Ricky Gervais's comment is prescient, if you ask me, because who knows what things are going to look like in 10 years. And if you are canceled because you said or did something, I mean, take a look, for example. I'm not defending blackface. Don't get the wrong idea. I understand the problems with blackface, so please. But you have people, uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Now, he's about as hard left as you can get, so that's probably why they gave him a pass. But there was an attempt to try to cancel Jimmy Kimmel, which wouldn't have bothered me if they did, uh, but uh, because they went back and found some skits that he had done way back when, and he was in blackface. Now, way back when, when he did those skits, it was fine. Now it's not fine. In those days, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, what have you, okay, that's kind of funny, whatever. Now, uh, you might as well have uh, you know, committed the worst crime possible. And if they find out that you had done something like that, that at the time might have been completely kosher, but today the screamers on the left, they don't like it, uh, the pitchfork and torch crowd on Twitter will come after you and they'll do everything possible to, to cancel you, to obliterate you, to end your career, etc. We've all seen this happen. So, Cyrus, there's a connection here with the Beatles and John Lennon, and you mentioned it to me during the break. How would you characterize that? Well, we just had a couple of callers, you know, talking about Lennon's later life and things that he had wrote or what had, he had what, written. What he had written, okay. uh, and and canceling the material of work that he had done with the Beatles, uh, you right. know, prior to that. So, we're, it's in a sense, it's it's another form of cancel culture where we're like, oh, he said something at one point, I don't like it, and he's no good forever. There's, right. there's not a lot of forgiveness in, in cancel culture. He was, they tried to cancel the Beatles back in, what was it, 65, I think it was, or 66, when he had mentioned in an interview, he said that uh, the Beatles are more popular than Jesus, and that was just, there was a, a hue and cry, and people went berserk. It was, it was particularly here in the United States. Um and then later he explained what he meant by that. Um, and there's an example of how sometimes things, as they appear on the surface, are not actually what they really are. Uh, and at least what he said was, and who knows? I mean, you know, who knows what he meant when he said it? But after the fact, he said that it was kind of a commentary on how bad things have gotten in popular culture in, in the United States and elsewhere, where the Beatles would be more popular than popular than Jesus. I think he was saying that, and that's what he said. He, he he was saying it almost as you know, isn't this a shame that you know now? I mean, Jesus is not even as popular as the Beatles, and there's a certain truth to that. I think it's more true now than ever before. Um, but they tried to cancel the Beatles really hard. Remember the you've seen the pictures, Cyrus, the bonfires with their albums and things like that, as if that would actually. I mean, those were, uh, and this is the thing that never made sense to me. They were burning their albums in protest. I, I can understand why people might try to protest that. I'm not arguing that point, but you paid money for this. And so if you're burning it, it's not hurting the Beatles. They already made their money off that. They already made their royalties. And my guess is that when people later on realized, well, I, you know, that might have been a bit extreme, they would go out and buy a replacement album in which <laughs> the Beatles exact, make more money. That's exactly right. Have you ever burned an album, Cyrus? No, I've worn some out, though. No, that's true. Yeah. All right. Well, let us pray against the cancel culture. Um, ultimately, 
the whims and the cultural mores change from generation to generation, and often within a generation. Are you ever worried about being canceled? I mean, you say some, you say some things every once in a while, and they're you're not wrong, but it's just like, uh oh. That's a good question. We, um, I guess if I'm completely candid with you, I recognize that that the possibility certainly exists. Um, there are people, of course, who don't like the my position on certain things, or they don't like my opinion on certain things, and they're vocal, and they'll try to attack, or, I mean, give, give an example, Cyrus, I don't think you know about this, but um, I have certain political opinions, uh, I have certain opinions on things like, should a, you know, a quote-unquote Catholic politician uh, be permitted to receive Holy Communion, my position on that is no, I don't think so, and things like that, I can't remember exactly which one, but just in the last week or so, um, I posted a comment on Twitter to that effect, and I don't think it was that particular issue, but I'm just blank right now what it was. And some woman pops up, and she, you know, and she she cc's Father Rocky on her tweet. Hey, Father Rocky, look what Patrick Madrid's saying. He has this opinion. I think he should keep it to himself, don't you? And then you know, Father Rocky, do you permit your show host to say things like this? I mean, that kind of stuff. She she was trying to get me in trouble, have fun. You know, I think what she wanted was that Father Rocky would call me up. Patrick Madrid, you stop saying that stuff on Twitter. Uh, and of course, these things don't happen. But there's an example, Cyrus, to your question. There are people out there yeah. who they want to slap you down and silence you if, uh, if they think you're getting out of line. And is it possible? Sure. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I think as, as long as I am adequate in speaking the truth in love, then come what may, I'm okay with that. I guess that's how I can answer that question. For more of The Patrick Madrid Show, visit RelevantRadio.com slash Patrick.